The more information that comes to light about the British state's recent treatment of Tommy Robinson, the more truly shocking and horrifying it becomes. After two months in a British prison, which by law owes a duty of care to each and every prisoner, no matter their political views, an emaciated, gaunt and mentally fragile Tommy both looks and sounds as though he had been held not at Her Majesty's pleasure in a liberal democracy, but as a brutalised enemy soldier in a prisoner of war camp for downed American airmen in 1970s Vietnam or Saddam Hussein's 1990s Iraq. What on earth has the British state done to him? America and Canadian news channels and high-ranking politicians are now seriously questioning Britain's status as a fully functioning liberal democracy. Foreign journalists are wondering why British journalists seem to care so little about the multiple breaches of Tommy's human rights, as laid down by the European Court of Human Rights. International outrage is quite rightly being directed at Britain. So I think it's high time the British Home Secretary answered some crucially important and legitimate questions in, in order to reassure Britain's moral community and indeed the civilised world at large that those involved in the British state's physical and psychological torture of Tommy are held to account. Now whether Home Secretary Sajid Javid exhibits any interest will be an interesting issue considering he swore his oath of office on the Quran and Tommy is therefore not a man uh, Javid will look upon kindly. Anyway, these questions to the Home Secretary should be along the following lines. 1. Tommy spent 23 and a half hours a day in solitary confinement for two months. Had he not been released on appeal, he would have been in solitary confinement for over a year. And bearing in mind that solitary confinement is a form of punishment, of psychological torture, why was he deliberately placed in a prison with a high Muslim population where he was presented with the choice of either being maimed or murdered on the one hand or forced to choose the psychological torture of long-term solitary confinement on the other? Psychological torture is in breach of the guidelines laid down by the European Court of Human Rights. So what action will you be taking against Darren Hughes, the governor of Onley Prison? Home Secretary Javid. 2. Tommy suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder after a previously long stretch in solitary confinement. The details are in his prison notes. Was Tommy's history of PTSD taken into account with regard to forcing him into solitary confinement that could have run for over a year? What's the name of the psychiatrist who ignored the medical report? Home Secretary Javid, and what action do you propose taking against him or her? 3. Tommy was deliberately placed in a ground floor cell in close proximity to the prison mosque. Muslim prisoners spat at Tommy through the windows and threw human excrement at him. This is a form of physical and psychological torture and contravenes the British government's duty of care to all prisoners, even political prisoners, in addition to breaching the European Court of Human Rights. What action will you be taking against the prison governor, Mr Darren Hughes, Home Secretary Javid? 4. Within a mere two-month period, Tommy lost 40 pounds in weight. This is because he feared the food from the prison kitchen, staffed by some Muslims, could be poisoned. And indeed, he was subjected to mockery by Muslim prisoners who asked him, Enjoy your meal tonight, Tommy. Ha ha. Gover uh, Governor Darren Hughes could have organised a different way of ensuring food was provided, but he chose not to. Tommy was forced to live on a can of tuna fish per day. Hence the astonishing and dangerously fast weight loss. Tommy was deliberately starved, subjected to physical torture. In other words, in direct contravention of the British state's duty of care to prisoners and in direct contravention of the European Court of Human Rights. So what action will you be taking against Governor Darren Hughes, Home Secretary Javid? Five. It seems clear that a medically dangerous weight loss of 40 pounds over only two months would have killed Tommy if it had continued for another two to three months, let alone another year. 
Why was this not picked up by the prison doctor, who is clearly in dereliction of duty? What's the name of this doctor, and what action do you propose taking against him or her? Home Secretary Javid. 6. Despite multiple death threats against him by Muslim inmates, Thomas' cell door was left unlocked on multiple occasions. By accident, it is claimed. How can anyone sleep knowing their cell door might be open with Muslims and boiling water laced with sugar lurking nearby? This deliberate withholding of sleep, coupled with deliberately inducing fear and paranoia, is both physical and psychological torture in breach of the British government's duty of care law and the European Court of Human Rights. What action will you be taking against Governor Darren Hughes, Home Secretary Javid? Tommy has clearly been singled out for physical and psychological torture whilst in prison, but he shouldn't have been in prison in the first place. So some additional questions for Home Secretary Javid then. 7. Is there a single precedent in British law where within a period of only five hours a British citizen can be arrested on one charge, tried on a completely different charge, and then imprisoned for over a year under a media blackout. If there is not, why was the court minded to treat Tommy differently from all other prisoners in the entire history of British law? 8. Contempt of court is a civil offence. So why did Judge Geoffrey Marson treat it as a criminal offence and pass sentence as a criminal offence in the full knowledge this would lead to harsher conditions for Tommy in prison? This is clearly not a mistake an experienced judge could possibly make, so we can only assume it was done deliberately and as such amounts to perverting the course of justice. In addition to this, uh, Lord Chief Justice Burnett, the appeal judge, stated the initial trial was rushed and flawed and linked to prejudice against Tommy. What action will you now take, Home Secretary Javid, against Judge Geoffrey Marson? 9. Why was Tommy denied access to his own lawyer? Why was his lawyer told Tommy was going home rather than to prison? What is the name of the court official who lied to Tommy's lawyer and what action will be taken against him or her Home Secretary Javid? 10. I understand Tommy did not plead guilty to the contempt charge and is still unclear as to the exact legal point he was imprisoned upon. The media lied to the country about his pleading guilty and considering this is a lie about a serious case with serious implications, what action do you intend to take against the British media in general and the independent newspaper's Lizzie Drearden in particular, Home Secretary Javid? 11. After initial imprisonment in HMP Hull, which was relatively safe, why was Tommy moved to HMP only, a Category C prison with a 30% Muslim population, which is the highest percentage of Muslims in any Category C prison in Britain? The British government, by law, owes a duty of care to all prisoners in Britain, even political prisoners, and deliberately placing him in a high-risk prison contravenes that duty of care. So what is the name and position of the person who made the decision to send Tommy to Onley Prison, and what action will you be taking against him or her Home Secretary Javid? 12. The prison service claimed in the Daily Mail today that Tommy was not held in solitary confinement, which is a lie. What is the name and the position of this person within the prison service who made this lie, and what action will you be taking against him or her, Home Secretary Javid? On a final note, given the serious breaches of human rights with regard to Tommy, why am I having to ask questions that need to be asked? Where are the human rights lawyers, the decent politicians and the decent journalists? Well, do you know they no longer exist in Britain, not one. The only articles I've read from the mainstream media raise none of the points I've raised above. All they do is shriek, thug, criminal, racist, Islamophobe, etc, etc, etc. The moral sewer British journalists now inhabit is truly something to behold. And even if they were to watch this video, they will remain unmoved. Tommy doesn't share the same political opinion as them, you see. 
So exactly like their historical counterparts in Nazi Germany or Communist Russia, they have no problem at all in ignoring the building of the Gulag and the concentration camp. Scum. Evil, wicked scum. Every one of them. This video is pretty long, so I'm not going to add to it by talking about the media, but I will be making an in-depth video about their obscene behaviour shortly. And finally, finally, uh, please bear in mind that asking a British Home Secretary to look into these issues of the psychological and physical torture of Tommy Robinson might just be affected by the extraordinary fact that for the first time in the history of our country, we have in Sajid Javid a Home Secretary who swore his oath of political office on the Quran. Welcome to our present in totalitarian Sharia Britain and welcome to our future. It's Tommy and others today, tomorrow it will be all of us.